I'm not doing a selfie. Okay, hey everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. I'm actually in a car with my coworkers because we're doing some stuff for work. And since this is my usual broadcast time, I said, screw it, we gotta do a broadcast. So I'm talking about all kinds of crazy stuff with my coworkers here. So if you hear any people screaming like a crazy Filipino ah! or a crazy Haitian, you'll understand what's going on. All right, so uh, the big... Right here, right here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, this was gonna be like in the car today. Um, so, wow, Greg, really? I mean, really, man, can't you drive like any better? Oh, God. So, today we're going to talk about that living campaign that I wanted to... I swear the director's going to kill me. We're going to talk about the living campaign that I wanted to put together. Um, I talked to Henry uh, over at uh, Paradigm Concepts, who was nice enough to give me some information about how to do it correctly. So, we've been talking about it. And it really comes down to what I'm thinking is getting the information to people in a reasonable way. I think, you know, it, it, it's that digital aspect of it. Um, you know, being able to have people basically, first of all, sign on, log on, get their information there, and then record when they play adventures, and then immediately get feedback. It's probably in here, guys. It's like, Japanese market, I'm looking at it right there. Turn in here. See, see this, this is how this video is going to be a lot of me screaming about what's going on. Right there, Marjorie, the one says Japanese market. It's spelled Japanese market. The green sign. <sighs> Greg, what are you doing with this driver? I, I mean, it's an SUV. That's how it, it Let me go in Jesus Christ. Oh my God. So, this is what we're doing here. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm hoping that I hope I have enough power to do this whole video. Of, but what are you doing? Oh my God. All right, so we're stopping for food. I don't even care. So, um, I think the Living Campaign would be an awesome, awesome thing for people to start trying out and doing. I've always wanted to do it for you know third party guys. I thought it was a smart idea when people initially talked about doing it. And I think it can only get better. So what I'm thinking about doing is adding that digital component. So if you're playing, let's just call it, let's call it Living OGL. That's the name we're going to potentially call it. If you're playing Living OGL, you go, you sign up online, get your information, you put your character up there. We have your character basic stats. You're not going to go very deep into stuff. We're going to have your basic character information. And as you do adventures and you play them, you know, you'll get to record the information. And of course, most likely I'm going to have something like the time units. Oh, look, John. Hey, John, what's going on? Um, we're looking like stuff using time units to basically... Uh, wow, dude. You get the Hummer in the way? What's your plan? Ah, oh, jeez. So, using time units to basically, to basically, you know, control how many adventures you can play, which I think is the important part. Because I think the issue that I've noticed is that when people get adventures, especially for, you know, living campaigns, they can go through, you know, three, four in a weekend. So, I also want to start... Okay. I would like to start with roughly having like 30 to 40 adventures already done. And that's, you know, ready to go playable. And maybe we'll release like, you know, two the first week, two the second week, two the third week, two the fourth week, and then drop down to like a one a week drop just so we can get it. And realistically, the adventures will be playable. Let me phrase it. The adventures should be playable for a long time, but the actual results from me playing will probably be good for probably like three months. So you'll have 90 days, I'm guessing to play the adventure until it becomes, you know, to what you, stuff you input kind of drops off. With that, the plan is also to collect the information kind of in real time, which we can use to affect stories later on. If you want to do like a big gathering or a big, uh, uh, well, kind of like they do in Origins, but I guess the gathering is what they do with Paradigm Concepts, that's what we call it, it's a gathering. Um, what Henry and them usually do, you know, the events, like how many, like what percentage of people did this, uh, this event, what percentage of people did this, you're going to hit that car, you do know that, right? You're gonna hit this other car. You do know that's right. Your car's too wide for this, right? You do know that. He's not listening to me. I no, I'm not paying attention. <sighs> so, to do these large major events, we're gonna basically set it up that, you know, let's let's suppose you do an adventure. There's five things in adventure, you know, that happen. Like they're either yes or no questions. Did you say this guy? Yes, no. Did you do this thing? Yes, no. And the results will cause us to tailor the big major event based on your answer. And once you do certain things, will eventually become canon in the game. So that's kind of where we're looking to do that. I think it's very possible to do it correctly. And I, I, I'll go at the same thing. I think it's the digital aspect that really helps out. Because so many people love playing living campaigns. They love playing organized play. They think it's very, very strong. But it's that, you know, how long is it going to take for me to get my stuff up there? How long is it... What I do... Is it going to affect the game somehow? And that's something that I think uh, Paradigm Concepts, you know, mastered. I think they got that exactly right. And I think that more people want to have effect on the game they play in. So that's why we're kind of doing that. Um, 
with that, I'm also looking to approach third-party publishers and getting them involved with this by they can have their adventures put into this um, digital form and have their adventures played. So, okay, we'll just use New Exodus, for example. Suppose we have all these regular adventures, and suppose we do like, like five or six New Exodus adventures that are specifically for New Exodus, where you can get things and you can bring them into the, the OGL, OGL um, living campaign. We're going to have to set that up so you get the flavor of our world, but at the same time, you're still playing Pathfinder. You're still playing stuff that people recognize. You just get to try out other people's worlds. I think it's a good idea because really, living campaign as a concept is really kind of a marketing thing. That's their main focus. It's focused on doing the marketing for companies. That's why Wizards did it. That's why Paizo has done it. It helps build a steady brand of people playing. And I think we want to do the exact same thing. And since we're keeping it very, very open at OGL, our focus really is helping to promote, well, I say OGL, but, you know, I mean, I'm saying Pathfinder, but it's, you know, promote more of that kind of content to people to play and people to see. So that's what I'm hoping that we do more and more of. I think if done correctly, this could be a great way to expand the hobby outside of the typical boundaries. Because, I mean, look, not everybody plays a Pathfinder Society. You know, some people are like, oh, it's too much like this, it's too much like that. Also, I think it's it's possible to build it so certain niches can come. I mean, some people love playing horror. Some people like playing horror a whole lot. And they want to play more stuff like that. They don't always get that, you know, in the adventures they get from, from Pathfinder. So we want to be kind of that alternative to that. Now, that being said, this is still very, very, very much in the rough, rough stages. It is really rough. Nothing's set in stone. Nothing's 100%. But, you know, I'm at the, the basic level, okay... We got the idea, we know how you want to execute it, now let's move on the execution. So I'm hoping maybe within a month or two we'll have either a, a beta for our online idea we're looking to do. Um, we still have to talk to some people about what's possible and what's going to cost us because that's going to be important. And oh, since some people are wondering, if we do it with third party guys and if we are going to do it, there will be a charge for third party companies to do this through us. I mean, let's just call it like it is. We want, to, we want to be able to basically, you know, keep going, keep people interested. I don't know if we're going to do free adventures. We most likely will be, but there will be some adventures that cost. I think it's basically going to be on the quality. You know, you if you get a free adventure, it should be a free adventure. It should be a good adventure. Hmm. If you if you pay, let's say, 99 cents for an adventure, it should be a good adventure. Oh, I paid 99 cents. I got my money's worth. I felt like I got my money's worth. That's what people, I think, people really want to do. They want to feel they got their money's worth. And then we might do even ones that are more expensive. You know, I, I think we'll let the market determine what they feel about paying for this kind of adventure. I think I think it's a good idea. I think it gives a little bit of elasticity to it. I think just giving away the adventures, I mean, you can do that when you're a big company. Paizo and Watsi do that. And I'm sure, like any large business, they're going to write this off as a business expense. But that's not how I see it. I see it as what it really is. It's an expense, and it's money going out of the company. And we're small, and we can't risk that kind of money just going out and having nothing come back in. So that's something we're going to focus on doing. Um, also with that, uh, an idea I got from a very good friend of mine, another retailer, who said to help out retailers for this and get them interested in this. You know, since we're getting all this information of where people are playing, what adventures they're playing, we could go to the retailer and say, hey, look, we have X amount of people in your area playing this. Would you be interested in maybe hosting games at your store? Or would you be interested in getting our content at your store? That You know, I mean, okay. Dreams Card Press, people... People want Dreams Card Press and Psionics in a living campaign. I agree. I'd like to do that also. I think that'll help also with their sales for them. So imagine we do some guys who are playing our Dreams Card Press uh, living OGL stuff, and they really like it. They want the store to carry it. Well, they got a fan base there. The store will order it because they know they got players who want to use it. It'll be there. It'll be readily available for them on a regular basis to play. She can't see us. You know she can't see us. You know, she. there she is. My coworker is getting lunch. She's just realizing. Don't hit anybody when you're coming out here. So, we've got all that going on. I think it's really got a lot of good potential to see a lot of amazingly different things. I think this whole um, living OGL might be, uh, you know, a, a great game changer for a lot of small companies who are looking to become, you know, bigger and more respectable companies. Where's she going? Does she not know? Wow, wow, wow. Some of my coworkers are a little, a little crazy. Get in the car. Oh my God, I could not find you guys. You couldn't find two large black men in a big SUV. That was difficult for you to see. I'm just saying.
Oh, I snacks. had some mochi bowls for you guys to try. Snacks. I'm doing my video still, okay? But I will try your mochi balls later. Let's see. Today I'm trying a mochi bowl. Okay. Uh, where was I? Uh, yeah. Thank oh, stores. We're getting retailers involved. Yeah. Where are you going, man? I know. Greg, do you know what you're doing? Greg. Going big girls. Greg is Greg is like you know He's scared me. It's quite terrifying that Greg is actually He's like Brooklyn driving. Driving. You're in Brooklyn. How about going the back right there, Ace? Out yeah. the back. Yeah. Hit hit it from the back, yeah. son. Try this, Greg. I'll try it for you, ball. I don't know. Is they the whole thing. Try one. Pop what? Out. what is this sweet? It's yeah. Ah. Well, it's not sweet, but it's, but it's cold. It's it's like an ice cream. Thanks yeah. for telling me. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's possible. Maybe we get this together. This isn't so bad. I kind of like this. So, I want to get some retailers involved in this and get them excited. Put on your seatbelt. This is live broadcast, right? Yeah, it's all live. So, if you oh swear, God. people will know you're swearing. Ah. Show my face. <laughs> As we can see you in the corner. Like, really? It's like the worst hiding ever. What is this thing made out of? Rice paper. Mm. Very tasty. Do you like it? I like the ice cream. I wish it had a little more flavor. They have, Well, they have vanilla, they have mango, they have green tea. But so like I said, that's something we're working on right now. So I expect to have something for you guys later. We'll talk some more about Rice it. Paper? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's gonna be some comments from other third party guys on what we're planning to do and stuff. Look, it's good, right? don't listen to what anybody else is saying. The only person who knows what we're doing is me, and I don't even know what we're doing. So look, we're gonna keep just doing cool stuff and thinking about cool ideas and make this awesome. Alright, I'm gonna finish eating this, then I'm gonna